very good morning, Venerable Shri Kongshan, members of the Sangha, honorable guests and distinguished speakers, brothers and sisters in the Dharma. On behalf of Kong Yingshan, Pokasi Monastery, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. I know it's a bit misty and foggy out there, but nevertheless, we're all meeting here. My name is Chen Yi, and I'll be your MC for this morning. To set the mood and spirit of the symposium, we'll be treated to a rendition of soothing music and songs performed by Dr. Ng Kam Ki. Dr. Ng, the stage is yours, and a big round of applause for Dr. Ng. Hi, uh, very good morning to all of you, dear venerables, uh, invited guests, and uh, fellow friends. Um, as one of the committees of the, today's event, I was given a very challenging task, which is uh, to use music to condition your mind so that uh, you can be very effective today to learn uh, what the, uh, the speakers uh, will deliver today. So uh, I figured out uh, uh, some uh, so-called peaceful music for all of you uh, and uh, comes with two phrases. These two phrases uh, in the website, uh, a lot of people quote that it's from the Lord Buddha, but uh, there are some websites that mention that it might not be as well. But the important thing is the message of the, the quotes, uh, the mind is everything. Uh, actually, it decides a lot of things in our life. It decides uh, why you are here today, why I'm here today, and uh, it even decides uh, why we live in a hazy condition today. So <laughs> it's very important that uh, we realize that the mind is uh, very important and we should try to understand it, try to nurture and cultivate it so that it brings us happiness. So I'll try to uh, sing the chorus for this moment. Uh, if you are comfortable, you can sing along with me. If not, uh, you can try to calm yourself, close your eyes, and so that uh, you can settle down, okay? So I uh, start with the choruses. The mind is uh, everything. What we think, we become. It goes like this. The mind is everything. The mind is everything. The mind is everything. What we think, we become. Everything. 
undergraduate and graduate degrees in Buddhist studies for monastics. The building is right behind you, so you can have a view of like the, the living hall. We also recently set a Buddhist college for nuns, where we train and educate them in the Dhamma practice and studies at Power Institute. In addition, plans to build a meditation retreat center are in the pipeline. The center will house a library and meditation floors for about 200 participants. And when completed, we welcome all of you to make full use of the retreat center and library facilities for your cultivation and personal growth. Finally, I'm pleased to announce the launch of our new publication, Exploring, Exploring Science and Buddhism. I would like to acknowledge and thank Siddhartha Center and the President, Mr. Wong Ha Long, who is here with us today for the generous sponsorship of this publication. This book is a compilation of essays by leading researchers and Buddhist practitioners from around the globe, exploring the encounters of Buddhism and science in various fields. You will find a copy of this publication in your goodie bag, and I hope you will find it informative and useful. Lastly, I wish all of you a fruitful symposium. May all beings be well and happy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Venerable. Please remain on stage, uh, Venerable, for a presentation of mementos to our speakers, Chairperson, uh, this morning. Next, I'd like to invite uh, Venerable Do Dr. Sumaloka, Dr. Alan Wallace, Professor John Wong, Professor Kwa, and Tracy Woon to come on stage to receive the mementos. Please remain on stage. We're going to take a group photo. Thank you, thank you all. So now we'll go to the symposium proper. Let me introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker this morning is Professor John Wong. Professor John Wong is the Dean of the Department of Psychological Medicine, Young Lunin School of Medicine, NUS. Professor John specializes in child and adolescent mental health and post-traumatic stress disorder. His topic this morning is the growing mind of adolescents, a window of opportunities and challenges. I'm sure it will be of great interest to many parents here today. Professor please. Framework of the current understanding of 
uh, what is in the developing mind in the teens and how it interacts and how it provides us the understanding of what are the risks as well as opportunities for our teenagers when they grow up. Um, and the opportunities and risk management is not just for the teens themselves, but this is also for the parents and the family and the loved ones to understand. And uh, this, I guess this is probably why many of us are here today. Um, so that we can help them to really grow up and nurture them and be the adult that they want to be to optimize their potential. So I've uh, entitled the presentation as Growing My Adolescence, a uh, window of opportunities and challenges. And I would like to cover in two perspectives. One is really what is the brain or the mind, the, the, the heart matter, I call it the hardware. And what is really the, how does it interface with the mind, uh, which is really a larger space encompassing the brain and the consciousness as well as the awareness, which I believe this is really the main theme of today's topic, which I believe my other distinguished speakers were uh, uh, involved in this area later on. Um, many of us understand that from past knowledge of clinical observation and science that the brain continues to grow and change throughout life. But I think what is interesting is that the brain uh, grow uh, most dramatically during childhood, but more importantly, in recent years of last 10, 15 years of brain uh, imaging studies, they have found that the brain actually grow even more uh, dramatically during the adolescent years of 12 to 20s. And this is a critical phase of cognitive and emotional growth in the life's trajectory because it coincides with many other changes physically, uh, in terms of physical image, stature, uh, hormonal changes, and importantly, the natural family life cycle, relationship with parents, friends, teachers, and as well as what we normally know as emergence of identity and the needs of oneself. So actually, over the span of 12 to 20 years, plus minus two years, it's really a very interesting and critical phase of a person's growth. And I think basically uh, this is the part that I will uh, attempt to see how we could discuss a little bit more during the Q&A uh, because I will not be able to cover everything. And how the changes and the faculty of cognitive motive mind presents itself to uh, the surrounding uh, as a window of growth. And most importantly, many of us understand that today our youth are excited, our youth are looking forward to nurturing, being nurtured and being able to uh, actualize their dreams as well as their potential. But of course, there are real tension, there are real traction in life, uh, and that is what many of our teens, and maybe for ourselves, during our teenage years, we struggle with. We just celebrated Singapore 50 years of uh, nation building, just in August, and I think many of us realize that in the sea of rain, many of them are adults, many of them are teenagers. But exactly what is the number of teenagers that we have, or young people we have in our country, based on the last census in 2014, as good as 858,000 of our populations are below 20 years old. And that contributed 22.1% of our population in 2014 last year. So while we have been, as a country, as a community, we have been preparing ourselves for the so-called aging silver tsunami, where based on census in 2012, we have about 12.5% of our populations are aged above 65. And by 2030, we anticipate that Singapore will have about 20% of our population above uh, age 65. But as of last year, we already have 21% of our uh, resident population uh, uh, under the age of 20. And this is really the group of future promise. This is really the group that will provide the nation, our community, the proof and the push uh, to reach SG 100. So looking at our population pyramid, indeed our population pyramid shows that our people will be aging. There will be more people who are elderly. But notwithstanding, you look at the pyramid, uh, uh, the age of uh, below 20 uh, is going to move up into the young adult uh, age group as well. Uh, by SG 50, they will be really uh, in the uh, elderly group. So investing them now 
in them now, bring, bringing them up, nurturing them, will have its payoff in the years to come. And most importantly, uh, many of us have children, many of us have relatives who are young children and teenagers. We have to deal with them day to day. And so understanding them, their brain, their mind development will be very useful and important. Another good news is that, based on the national census and statistics, comparing 20, 2003 to 2013, over a 10 year period, the educational attainment of our population has improved dramatically. As of 2013, two years ago, we have already have easily 50% of our population uh, attaining uh, education level post-secondary. It shows that there is a lot of potential for us to harness uh, if we are able to help them manage their mind and their brain and their environment. So adolescent, what exactly uh, we all know about adolescent, we are familiar with this, that it's a rite of passage or in some uh, cultural community it's really a ceremony that marks an individual's transition into adulthood or into a new status in a society. And a lot of time they, they focus on the transition to adult uh, status, but more importantly, there is a significant change uh, physically as well as emotively and psychologically. And that is something that is not seen uh, at the point of time, but it's visible over a period of time. And of course, we are fully aware that during know, adolescence is the time of growth spurt. Uh, normally, for girls, they have the advantage of growing a lot faster, uh, having a two-year head start. And that explains why when it comes to medical school admission, all the A-level and IB students, uh, female students, usually their results are better than the boys. And obviously, they have a better chance of getting the medical school. Puberty is um, uh, one of the highlights of adolescent years because that's where the most rapid maturation uh, involving hormonal bodily change, as I mentioned earlier on. But the challenge is that pinpointing the puberty, the start and the end, is always challenging because there's individual variation and it's contextualized with the community, the family, and as well as genetic factors. The average adolescent is uh, really, when you look at it, uh, all the data is really something very abstract, and it can be a statistical abstraction. But I think what is important for us to look at it as a concept. And of course, we are aware that there are uh, maturation issues in boys and girls, uh, that early and late maturation, uh, early maturity, uh, uh, the, 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 the advantage of being early in maturing, obviously, is obvious. Uh, and early maturing boys appear to perceive themselves more positively, and that will bring on a very strong uh, level, of, high level of confidence, as well as uh, give them a good self-esteem, which will impact on the mind, which will impact on how they uh, develop their identity. As for girls, obviously, the, the studies are less consistent. Uh, some early maturation can be a bit of disadvantage. Uh, it depends on exactly which aspect of physical growth or hormonal growth uh, that uh, the, the girls mature early. Uh, one simple example is that for the uh, young girl to have early minati or first period coming at P3 or P4, it can be very disadvantage socially or very embarrassing for the among of girls who are still uh, uh, young and playful at heart. Uh, and of course, um, the, the, the understanding that physically uh, the girls, the earlier maturing girls may well be four or more years in advance of similar age boys and that may create some social disconnect that impact on the, their, their self-perception identity as well as their mind. So today's focus is a little bit more on cognitive development and what we would really want to understand is really what are the uh, cognitive development in terms of top process development in adolescent, as an adolescent, they will be able to start thinking, exploring about possibility, something that they may not think about. It's very common among the children I work with in the clinic. Uh, the primary school children will never talk about, uh, what's it never? Depending on, on how parents prime them, uh, if, if you leave them naturally, not many of them, maybe about 10, 20% of them will talk about their dreams if they have been a, 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 an avid reader and situationally aware. But 
when it comes to adults, many of them will start looking at possibilities and start thinking ahead, start looking through, thinking about hypothesis, abstract thinking, and also thinking beyond conventional limit and pushing the limit. Obviously, we have come across many social reports in the newspaper about some of the adults getting into trouble with the law as they push the limit of social tolerance and legal tolerance. And of course, in psychology, there are many uh, understanding of the, 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 the how emotionally or psychologically uh, a child develops in the adolescent and the adulthood, and concrete thinking and where it allows them to operation uh, operationalize their, their, their thought process, as well as formal thinking that allow them to you know abstract proposition are uh, important phase of development that allow them to attain the abilities of the abilities of adulthood. Uh, next is really on friendships, uh, because what we all know about teenagers is really about peers and many of the parents will tell us that they will spend time chatting with their peers. Uh, previously it was on the phone, now it's on social media, now it's on the chat uh, and they will not even talk to parents or even have a family meal with parents. So this is really a phase where uh, a peer relationship and friendship means a lot to them. And later on, I will try to share with you some of the findings in the study that how this actually impacted some of the uh, adolescents and created a risk for them. So coming back to the focus of the team uh, uh, of my, my presentation is really, in a nutshell, very quickly, what happens in the developing brain. Uh, NIMH at Bethesda, they have a, a good study on teen's brain over the last 10 years, and many of their findings actually are uh, very interesting and uh, uh, allows us to understand, to un know exactly uh, what we do not know or even debunk some of the myth that we thought was the case. So this NIMH study, um, uh, the teen's brain, basically look at teen's brain being a brain that is still under construction, contrary to what was believed or what was understood previously, that the child's brain will grow rapidly uh, through the childhood and by the time they reach teenage years, they will mature. I'm sure many of you all have read Straits Times article by Mr. Andy uh, somewhere in May, June this year. But there was a very good uh, uh, column that Mr. Andy wrote in Straits Times. Uh, the title was very interesting and a little provocative to the point where that should teenagers be held accountable legally. But putting that aside, uh, I think the points.